The eye is the window to the soul. And that's what mock-ups really do for your business, especially if you're running a print-on-demand business or a digital business. Mock-ups are essentially what's going to sell those products. Even if you have a handmade business and you're creating mock-ups for your t-shirts, maybe you can't take those product photos by yourself. Hopefully this video finds you and helps you in creating mock-ups that are realistic or high converting and will get you sales over time. So without further ado, we're gonna hop straight into this video. I'm gonna show you guys those tips, tricks, and hacks sprinkled throughout this video today. So tip and hack number one is to create some type of Canva template or kit that has three to five image cards that includes maybe three different colors of mock-ups on that listing, a size chart or a color chart or an info card. And the first reason why this is such a incredible thing to have for your business is first of all, if you have a certain product type, let's say the C1717 t-shirt and you have your three different colors that you primarily sell on your shop and then you have your size chart and color chart, all you have to do is drag and drop the designs in where you overlaid previous designs into and that goes into our second half, which is dragging and dropping your designs into areas that you have put designs in the past. In Instead of deleting a design, you can just drag and drop it over to the design you previously overlaid. And what's really nice is Canva already auto does the opacity. So let's say you have the opacity set to 80% on a mock-up and also your rotation is slightly rotated. That is what the drag and drop feature will do is it carries over and copies all of the edits you made on the previous design. So this speeds up your mock-up creation <laughs> so much faster in your business and it was something that I was wowed with when I first began. And this is something I've been doing for the past few years. A lot of people have asked me, how do you create mock-ups so quickly with Canva? And that is my secret sauce to creating really quick mock-ups because I download them as a package. So this package includes, again, three to five different mock-ups, which may be three to five different colors. I usually do a maximum of five. I don't do over five different colors because I don't want to overwhelm my buyers with too many choices and options. I generally offer five different color selections at maximum. And then I usually add in a color chart that shows all of the different other colors that I sell in my business. Most of the time, people just select the colors that they like out of those three to five colors. And I've had so many bestsellers by using this method, only offering a maximum of five colors. So I cannot recommend enough. Honestly, some of my best selling products have had three colors or less. So I know a lot of people get very overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, there's so many colors you can select with print on demand. If you go to Printify's website, there are hundreds of different options, especially if you use a print provider like Swift POD. I know of Swift POD, there is usually 20 plus different colors you can use, especially with the comfort colors, right? There's so many beautiful colors with comfort colors. It's like, what color do you select? For me personally, I like the color pepper and that's just my preference. Like guys, I wanna say that sometimes I choose colors that I personally would wear, Pepper is one of my number one colors. Ivory, there is white, there is a chambray. There, I feel like I really mispronounced that. Also, I've said this in other videos, but I have pronunciation issues and speech difficulties. So please forgive me. <laughs> for a moment. I do apologize for the way I pronounce words. Anyways, that is my quick statement on that. With that being said, color blue jean, there are just so many different colors that you can choose. And sometimes guys, my hack to finding the perfect colors to use on my listing is by going to Etsy, going into the niche that I am creating designs for and seeing what's top selling and what are the main colors that other shops are selling. And then I will choose those colors for my mock-ups. And those are usually going to be my primary colors that I use for my listings. So again, another pro tip is if you're overwhelmed with all the color selections that you can choose from, just go to Etsy, do the market research, see what is selling for other shops and what they're using as their main mock-up photos. That is number one indicator on what you should be selling in your own business. And sometimes it's easy to choose the colors that you like. And the reason why I generally choose colors that I like is because I'm a huge Etsy consumer and I actually have purchased in the past from print-on-demand businesses. I've purchased from handmade businesses. I'm a huge Etsy customer as well. I probably spend 
thousands of dollars on Etsy every single year because I love personalization items. One of the reasons why I sell on Etsy is because it is one of my favorite platforms to buy on as well. So I do my own market research on myself and I see what colors I like. And generally those are the most popular colors in the niches that I'm also going in. So it is doing your market research and putting on your customer hat for a second and looking at all the listings and your future competition and seeing what they're selling and choosing the colors that make sense for that niche that you're going into that you are still competitive in the market and you're also choosing a color that is just really trendy and in right now. So the second hack and tip that I just briefly went over in the first hack and tip, which is to use the drag and drop feature on Canva. This was literally mind blowing to me the first time I used it. And I have never went back ever since I started dragging and dropping. So highly, highly recommend trying this out. A lot of people don't necessarily know about it. At least that's kind of the general consensus I've gotten in doing a lot of YouTube tutorials and also just in my courses. I've been with so many clients now that every time I talk to them and I may ask for some feedback, a lot of my past clients clients and students have said, oh my gosh, Heather, that drag and drop feature blew my mind. And I'm like, that is just so crazy because I just don't even realize I do it anymore. So anyways, that's me overhyping this up, but it is a game changer. If you haven't already learned that this is a feature on Canva, highly, highly recommend. Hack number three is using shadow and highlight elements over your designs so that if let's say there is a little bit of a fold on a t-shirt, if there is a highlight over a t-shirt area that is really bright and you can't really adjust the opacity on the design enough that it overlays over the t-shirt correctly, this is when you will want to use a shadow. One of the most common issues that I've came across is when I have a black t-shirt mock-up and I overlay my design and it does not look realistic because the shadows are so dark. And even if I adjust the opacity of the design over the mock-up, it's still not going to look correct or realistic. So that's when I will use a shadow element to darken the area a little bit more to make it more realistic. The fourth hack that I found using Canva for mockups is one of the biggest issues, and I know a lot of people have asked about this, is how do you remove hair from the designs so that your design is not overlaid over a model's hair on a mock-up image. Now, one of the things that I usually do is GIMP or Photopea, to be quite honest, because there is ways where you can select the hair, you can delete whatever is overlaying near the hair, and that is generally an easy way to remove it. However, for me, sometimes I'm just lazy and I don't want to take a design in a mock-up image to GIMP or Photopea because just to switch out of Canva and go to a different software. It takes a lot of time and let's just be honest, I'm lazy sometimes and I just want to remove the hair on Canva. So the way that I have done this is by reverse erasing my designs so that the hair doesn't show up on the image. So I will eyeball it and I will erase where the hair is on the design. And that is essentially how I remove the design from the hair on my mockups on Canva. Canva. However, I did want to say there is PhotoP and GIMP that are free design softwares and photo manipulation softwares that have a lot of capabilities that Adobe has. And again, completely free. And you can do this process and make it a lot more realistic. You can distort your designs, add shadows, and really edit designs over mockups so it looks very realistic. Canva, again, is just my hack and my fast way of doing mock-ups. But if I really have a mock-up image that I want to use that has hair all over where the design usually would be placed, that's generally the time that I would go to GIMP or PhotoP. So just so you know, those options are available as well. And if you want to see a tutorial, comment down below on that and I can make that in a future upcoming video here as well. So guys, the fifth hack for Canva that is really not a hack, but just something to talk about when it comes to realistic mockups and image cards on your Etsy listings is adjusting opacity to represent the product type. So one thing that I want to remind people about is with print on demand, if you are selling t-shirts with print on demand, it's very important to know what the process of printing is. And for most print on demand companies, they do use direct to garment printing where ink is 
is infused into the material of the t-shirt or sweatshirt or whatever apparel that you're printing on. Now, I do want to preface by saying that this printing method is different for mugs or tumblers, and it's really important to learn the printing processes of every product that you're creating. I could make a whole different video on these processes, but today the most important one and one of the most common product types that I know a lot of subscribers and previous clients and students have used is apparel and apparel generally is direct to garment printing. Due to the direct to garment printing process, when ink is infused into the fibers of t-shirts or sweatshirts, what can happen is a faded appearance of the design. So this is really important to represent your products appropriately when it comes to opacity for the design overlaid on a mock-up. So when your design's overlaid on a mock-up, if it is a white t-shirt, generally I go down to opacities as low as 75% all the way up to 90% depending on the lighting of a mock-up as well. Sometimes mock-ups are edited quite a bit. They may have a filter on the mock-up, so you want to adjust opacity to represent that mock-up correctly. But generally speaking, I would never have opacity at 100% or my transparency at 100%. Now, when it comes to black t-shirts, like we were talking about adding shadows earlier, you do want to add a shadow if there is a portion of the t-shirt that is very dark. I would add a shadow there and then opacity wise, I've went down to as low as 70% for opacity on black t-shirts. Do not be scared to adjust your opacity to a lot lower, just again, so it represents the design correctly on a t-shirt and how it will actually print. This is one of the main reasons why I suggest ordering sample t-shirts, especially of a black and of a white t-shirt, just to get a feel on how these t-shirts print with direct to garment printing. So guys, if you stay till the end of this video, I have a bonus hack for those of you watching that is going to go into a future video coming out on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell for future tutorial videos. I provide a lot of free content on my YouTube channel. I also provide a lot of free courses and trainings and other content and resources that can really assist you in your print on demand businesses. So do not forget to check out the links down below for those as well. So hack number six is creating your own color charts with either a color picker or you can screenshot the colors on Printify's backend and upload them into picture frames on Canva. And this is essentially how you can create color charts quite easily if you would like. You can also screenshot the t-shirts on Printify's backend, remove background, and add them to a listing as well. That's always another option that you can do as a pro tip on creating your own color charts if it, that is something that you you want to do rather than purchasing. However, I do want to say there are really nice color charts on Etsy. I personally have purchased color charts in the past. However, I will say some of the colors Printify might not offer. So I've got into the habit of just creating my own color charts as time went on. So I would highly recommend either purchasing a color chart or creating your own color chart. And again, that tutorial is going to be coming up next on this channel. Besides that, that is it for this video. Don't forget to stick around for that blooper reel because you guys know one is coming. And don't forget to check out my other videos over print on demand and Etsy tutorials, tips, and tricks. Besides that, I'll see you guys in the next video here. I lost my train of thought. I lost it. It is gone. The train has left. Different types of... I'm going to repeat that because... I'm going to repeat that completely. So... So that is it for this... Sorry, I'm going to repeat this. Repeating conclusion.